Start my thing, baby. What's going on, fellas? How you been? How's things? Hope you're enjoying your Monday. Do you hate your job? Do you hate your wife? Do you hate that you don't have a job or a wife? That's all right. I'm here for you. I'm here for you to enjoy some stuff. So if you guys don't know and you're new to this channel, thank you for the likes and subscribes. Uh, my old lady does me a solid. And she looks up TikToks that have women behaving badly and sends them to me. Occasionally, there's one that's good enough that I can make a full video on, talk about the human condition, show you a little bit of stuff about dating with a great example. Uh, unfortunately, for every one that I find that's any good, there's 30 that are absolute trash. And these are the out-of-pocket chick talks. So I hope you enjoy yourselves. Uh, oops. Let's get started on the recording. I'm going to have to give that speech again. <laughs> Ah. Anyway, if you guys are new to the channel, my old lady does me a solid. She looks up Chick Talks online and sends them to me. And occasionally, there's one that's really good and I can make a great video showing you about the human condition. For every one of them that's any good, there's 30 that are absolute trash. So sit down and welcome to a bunch of out-of-pocket Chick Talks. Uh, this one is different. It's weird because like the Canadian Trump convoy was like the biggest thing ever. And then 15 minutes passed and now nobody cares about that. Now it's World War Three in the Ukraine. And all of a sudden, all the soldiers have Molotov cocktails and eye mascara. And I'm going, this is ridiculous. So I'm just going to sit here and watch them out of pockets. There is no structure to this. This is literally a grab bag of female thoughtery and insight. So I hope you guys enjoy yourselves. How you doing? Somebody else brought up a good point, too, where uh, they're like, I'm not watching this. I just have it on in the background while I'm doing dishes or working out and stuff. So for these walls of text they put in front of cleavage shots, could you at least read the thing? So I'm going to make an effort to read this stuff to you now. So if you can't be here to look me in the eye and see these women acting like thoughts, then you're going to at least look me in the eye, you know, audibly while I tell you what the hell's going on. Let's get to the first one. Hey, honey, there's a guy up here with me flirting. Come beat him up. She looks excited. Hey, shoot your shot. <laughs> um, uh, there's this thing where girls like to know they're feeling loved. Now, how they know they feel loved is generally because of how they were raised. How did dad show them validation? What did he do? And whatever their girlfriends tell them. Not important. For some reason, and this is because I was raised in like a redneck town, is there's this big thing where like somebody beating your ass is how your girl knows that you love her. And I've seen it so much. Like it's the it's the battle cry of of redneck Karen is my boyfriend could kick your ass. Now, while that may be good, if you're really strong and you could beat everybody up, that's great. But in the age of Crips and Bloods and Hell's Angels and psychos and you know white van alec minisan elliot roger types out of there you can't take the chance that you know your girlfriend's a little bit bored so maybe you better beat someone's ass and pray they don't have gang affiliations so what you do is you basically call it out as a bluff playfully it's actually an old guy who was in uh, the married red pill community i love this guy uh, frenchy he used to talk about how his wife had like a crush on the the phys ed teacher for his kids and he started just ripping into her like, shoot your shot. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Imagine how sweaty those balls may smell and that. And basically showing he didn't care with the with the underlying assumption that, hey, I know what's going on. Laugh it off. You know, you wouldn't be stupid enough to screw this up. It worked out well for him. So just keep that in mind when you guys are doing your thing. Let's move on. Yeah, some of these are just weird. Oh, yeah, and there's no music for a lot of this because, you know, copyright, you know, DMCA, that kind of stuff. So just hum your favorite Usher tune in the background, and you probably got it right. It's not like they're very clever anyway. Like I said, these aren't the best of the best. So this one, a core memory, my husband getting his rest because I was tired after I gave birth to his child. That's it. Like, do you see what I mean when I say, like, out of all 30 TikToks, I find one that's got any amount of cleverness or insight into it? That is the most boring woman on earth. And this was her, like, shoot your shot, make your creative. This is going to, like, she in her mind is like, this is going to go viral. 
I am going to take a video of my husband taking a nap because heaven forbid he wants to sleep. And then me being the mom who thinks of myself as a martyr. And all the moms are going to jump on this stuff. And yeah, it is. You couldn't have made it more clever. At least the, the other girl that was bitching about it in the last one, you know, threw a better Usher tune on there. Whatever. I talked about it in an old video, actually, an old mids watch. It's on the channel right now. Go look through the back. That's actual content, though. So you just want to goof around, just come here. Uh, it's weird. So I always talk about covert contracts, you know, where guys have these expectations of what her his woman should do. And when she doesn't do it, he doesn't tell her. And then he feels resentful and it builds this whole cycle of unattractiveness. And then you end up with TikToks that are just lame. Women do their own, too. And in this case, it's very common amongst brand new moms. Hey, guys, you want to be expecting dads? Here's your first one. The wife thinks... I am going to sacrifice everything for my kids to be a great mom, and then everybody will worship the ground I walk upon. My husband will coddle me, my kids will love me, my friends will worship me, and then when none of this comes to fruition, because the guy's probably busy too, and he's doing his own thing, it's not like he's having 10-hour, you know, EVE Online marathons or whatever, and the friends don't really care, and the kids are just kids, they got no chill, and then she acts very resentful because nobody fulfilled my covert contract, so... Uh, for the ladies watching this, if you're about to have a brand new kid and you're expecting to become Mother Teresa, I'm here to tell you, uh, don't eat paint. Nice. Having said that, if you're going to do that, at least make it a little more clever. If you're going to berate your husband passive aggressively online, like, make it cool. Next one. Oh, yeah. When you realize you can make money slandering creepy men on Medium. Look at that. Nice guys. These three behaviors make us incredibly uncomfortable. And it was like... What the hell is this? Oh, it's 33,000 views. It's made $1,300 and it takes three minutes to read. Dude. Just the fact that like she admits it's a grift should right there. I was actually like pleasantly surprised. Don't kid yourself. Everybody's like, oh, these dudes with microphones and podcasts online, these red pill dudes, these MGTOWs, these black pill guys, they're all so mean and evil and they're just weaponizing women and making money off of it, making their making their millionaires, making their millionaires because whammon equals thoughtery equals bad. And I'm here to tell you, guys did not invent the business plan of shitting on the other gender for fun. Absolutely. Millennial women took this and like, Let's just run with it. Let's take every purchase of cat litter and give you a free nice guy suck dick article. Except for we're not sucking dick. They are. Or they're not. I guess that's the issue. Female frustration and bitching about it online is a multi-billion dollar industry. Where have all the good men gone? Uh, men ain't shit. These hoes ain't loyal. All the stuff you think of, women thought of it first. The only difference is the red pill guys did it better. We added some pomp and some circumstance and some lighting and like splashy logos and soy face thumbnails, which holy cow, I think those are so embarrassing, but you guys click 30% more than usual, so you gotta do it. Yeah, but we didn't invent it. The girls did. So I'm not gonna hear any more nonsense from you ladies. Trust me. Oh, next one. Okay. Uh, if you're regular to the channel, you might recognize this person, the the Jess Wetstein or whatever. This is the girl, and go back, watch it if you want to, my red-pilled coffee, where she was ditching her boyfriend and broke her phone because he didn't want her to have an OnlyFans account if they were going to start dating. And after that, like, dude, she's desperate to have another banger that makes it viral, so yeah. Trying to go about my normal day knowing that a war started three days ago. Uh-huh. Look at that. I often have panic attacks with a ring light behind me. Dude, women have no chill. Like here, case in point. Two things. One, oh my god, World War III's coming. Two, does this World War Three make my ass look fat? Hey, can maybe I can drive some like war-torn Ukrainian men to my uh to my only fans and i don't know she's from like vancouver so i know alberta has a huge ukrainian population so she might actually be part ukrainian i don't even know having said that 
Imagine being one of those guys thinking, this is my wife. She's my life partner. She's my girlfriend. She loves me. And then some hardship happens. And you're like, it's okay. She's going to sacrifice everything and be by my side. I'm here to tell you, do not expect that. It might happen. Probably won't. The ride or die bitch phenomenon is actually fairly rare. And if you think it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out for you, it's not. Good example. Here's some MGTOW rage bait for you. You know, if you can't be angry at women, what's the point of being here? Uh, this guy, married red pill, friend of his, kind of red pilled him when he saw it. The guy, am uh, acrimonious divorce. Wife took everything, took the kids, took that. He just wanted to see his kids. She was a bitch about it. The courts aren't going to tell me to do shit. He got so destitute and frustrated and sad and whatever that he went to the house and killed himself horribly by the way in the uh in the living room carpets all ruined that kind of thing and he was like this is gonna teach her a lesson this is what you did and you're gonna feel bad and do you know what that girl did she milked that sympathy for everything she was on social media talking about the tragedies of this oh this poor guy everybody who knew her knew she was a bitch but everybody who knew her wasn't everybody and everybody else was like oh this poor woman now she has to raise these kids all by herself, even though it's like, wait a minute. Didn't you like ban dad from the house and now you're worried about your single mom status? I'm not buying it. On, on though, this, uh, this trend of chicks who can't act, can't sing, can't even pick good Usher tunes. They have joined the wall of text MGTOW community. Case in point. Look at this. Why are you not on Twitter with this goddamned essay? Signs your wife does not desire intimacy with you. Guy in the background doing his chin-ups. You brought it up to her multiple times, but things only get better for a little bit, if at ever. You only do little things, but it never improves the intimacy. If you didn't initiate, it probably wouldn't touch or be intimate at all. Things slowly changed after kids' career, advancements, changes, spiritual growth, or financial hardship. Not much difference between your marriage and a friend you live with. I help men go through this every day. If you're dealing with these signs, learn how to fix it by watching my training workouts with me one-on-one. -on -one. Links in the bio. I'm like, you grifting son of a bitch. <laughs> hey, wife won't sleep with you. She doesn't like you. She's going to take the kids. You're not feeling loved. You have to cry into your pillow every night and jerk off to the tears. I got you, bro. We have a killer workout program that's way more complicated than anything you've seen online. It's half strong lifts. It's half gray skulls. It's half German volume training. And it's all, oh, man, look at these guys. Um, There's like five points on here and I could break them down. And I have broken them down in other videos. And I'm not going to link them all here because that's way too much work. And we're just sitting here laughing at goofy MGTOWs and, and thoughts. But I'll give you a hint. The one thing that gets me though is that if you didn't initiate, you probably wouldn't touch or initiate me at all. It's like you can't accept that women are the more reactive gender and then wonder why she doesn't jump on you like uh, like you're at a uh, the Blue Oyster Club. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up Police Academy and you'll see. It's like, dude, what did you expect? I want a feminine woman. All right, well, then get initiating, dude, because feminine women are super responsive. But 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 I wasn't told that I'd also have to do something. I thought she would just give it up. She'd act like a dude, but with a dress. It's like I... Don't know what circles you're floating in, but if you want a dude in a dress, you can easily go to like a professional men or a professional women's volleyball league, and I'm sure you'll find a few of them. They're crushing it in sports right now. Just go for the championship teams. You know what I'm saying? Uh oh yeah, this one. I can't tell if this is satire or not. I'm gonna go with probably not, but we'll have to see. Now is there Oh yeah, the morning routine. Alright, you guys ready for this one? Stop that. Stupid clicks in the thing. Um, I th It's got to be sad, Tara. There's no way this guy is this cucked. No way. No way. This is my wife's morning routine. Every morning, I will wake up, find her phone, and plug it in to make sure she starts the day with a fresh charge. I gather her cups from her spots around the house. They're usually still full, but I'll dump them out and give her a fresh drink. Let's put this one right here. She'll drink these throughout the day. Or she won't, but either way, 
she likes to walk around with them. Next, I prepare her coffee. She likes a homemade cold brew, pebble ice, a splash of whole milk, some honey, and cinnamon. I'll place it next to her bed. Let's put the channel changer in her hand for when she wakes up. She will not come out from under the covers unless it's a balmy 75 degrees, so I'll turn the heat up now. Even then, she can sometimes still wake up with the grumpies. That's where these special snacks come in. Let's do starbursts today. I'll leave a trail of starbursts from her mouth to her coffee. Finally, I'll lay back in bed and wait for her to wake up in case she wants to snuggle. Isn't she sweet? <laughs> Dudes, this is over the top. I Like I'm saying, it has to be satire. It's pretty damn clever. I will say this, though. Do you remember uh, this red-pilled mental model? It's like old. It's one of the oldest ones. It comes from a blog called No Ma'am. Go figure. Where they call women the most responsible teenagers in the room. The idea that women mature to a certain point, evolutionary speaking, because of the, the babies and you got to hang out with kids all day. So you can't be super mature. Guys take their sweet ass time, probably don't mature until their 30s. Girls do it early. And that explains a whole lot of stuff. And then stop taking them so seriously. So the reason this resonates, and I know it's staged, but the reason they're all staged. The reason it resonates is because people do like lesser versions of this. There's guys that like terrified if their wife wakes up grumpy. I'll tell you right now. My girl wakes up grumpy 87% of the time. And I have to blame the dog. The dog is like, he doesn't know what a weekend is. He doesn't know what a hangover is. He doesn't know what any of that shit is. The only thing he knows is what 632 is. He's got that down pat. And at 632, he'll rip off the blankets. And he slaps her in the head. And he's like, hey, where's breakfast? And you can't hit him because he's 13 pounds. He'll fly across the room and then you have to pay a vet bill. Plus hitting dogs on social media is like a career ender. Plus you love the little guy. Always grumpy. There isn't the skittles in the world to fix that situation. But here's 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 the solution that this guy is kind of hinting at. Don't take it so seriously, man. If she's going to be a giant baby growing up, treat her like a giant baby. Like if you had a four-year-old, every time she woke up, she says, shut up, you big poopy head. What are you going to do? You're going to drywall her through the, you're going to drop kick her through the drywall? No, she's a four-year-old. You're going to rub her on the head, give her a noogie and tell her to get out of your face, dumbass. <laughs> treat it like that. Having said that, if you have to give a trail of Skittles to your mouth, the Roku remote, by the way, nice touch. God knows how many times I've come into the room if my uh, if I had to work late, I come home and then the girl sitting there passed out with like blind date or something playing on repeat. Like, do you still want to watch this with the remote in her hand? <laughs> Pair of glasses still on. It's kind of adorable. It's actually okay. We're gonna skip one sec for the TikToks. I'm gonna tell you a quick story. When I was first dating my girl, she used to love it because I lived right next to the bars, so she'd go to the bars and I had to work night shifts. And we both get home around 5 o'clock or 3.30 to 5 o'clock. Like, she get home at 3.30 and then just pass out. And then I would come home at 5 after my shift. We'd come home, I don't know, say hello. And then we all get to sleep in for the next morning. It was great. One day, I'd come home and nobody's there. I'm like, oh, I guess she went home with somebody. And we were just casually dating. I don't really care. It just means, you know, she's not a keeper. So I get ready to go to bed, make myself something to eat, go to the bathroom. I look over and I see a purple blob in my tub. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Turns out she passed out in the tub and killed all the hot water for our entire building. So I'm like, aw. And in this case, yeah, I didn't take it too seriously. It's like, it's hot water. You'll get it back. So I pick her up. I throw her in the bed and she passes out. Phone was dead. I didn't charge it. But you know, whatever. We can't all be perfect men. Uh, it was one of those endearing moments. So yeah. When your girl goes to the bar, then comes home, has a shower and passes out, you know she's a keeper. <laughs> oh, speaking of which. The reason I was bringing up the girl is for this. Here, 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 here. I know nothing at all. I can't think you need to have a conversation. When your girls want to go out and bitch about their husbands and sex life, but you share yours and he's amazing in bed. Dude. I and the worst part is you'll never know until you get like in the round couples and that stuff by then it's too late but i'm telling you as far as like the green go-ahead flags for a girl is she refuses to bitch about you to her friends it's not saying she never has a problem with you i mean if you're like me you're about 65 percent asshole so it's it, you're gonna bitch about me but you're not just using the friends as an excuse to talk about a horrible is because like the smart ones they realize oh if i shit on you all day in front of everybody 
that tells people I have shitty taste in men and I'm too stupid to know that. And so the ones worth keeping keep their mouths shut when they got a problem or they deal with it with you or, and this is, hear me out, fellas, hear me out. Or you're a good man and she doesn't want to fuck it up by being a bitch. <laughs> I know, I know. Crazy, crazy. But if you've been watching alpha males on YouTube for any length of time, you probably have all the tips and tricks and strategies that you need to sprinkle a little alpha on your life. And then at uh, our Crantini hour, she's going to be like, you know, the best part about this guy, everything, everything. And that's going to be you fellas. It's going to be you fellas. Subscribe to the channel, by the way. Hey, now I have to ask you guys a question. This next one coming up. Did somebody actually say this? Did a guy actually tell her what she's saying here? Or did he not? I'm going to go with no. And I'll tell you why. Here. Now. Did somebody actually tell her that? I'm going to go with no. You do not get... You, here, let me go back to this. You do not get naturally looking duck face without some major surgery. I don't know who she's talking to. It's like, I love natural girls like you with the bolted ons and the lips that are the size of a goddamn Jumanji raft. No effing way. But remember before where the chick's like, hey, my husband's taking a nap. I'm going to take this opportunity to get some clout. Hey, the Ukraines are going to war. They're going to have World War III. Maybe I should put some ass shots and a link to my to my photo shoots for OnlyFans. I don't think anybody said this to her, and I don't think she gives a sh Anyway, I think what happened, I think what happened, I think what happened is she did the exact same thing. And if I can remember to do this, I'm going to put up like a 4chan picture of a chick at the gym making fun of a dude doing the weird workouts. All she did was look at all this stuff and think, Maybe I look cute in these glasses and I need a reason to talk about anything else but. So if I put it in, you're going to see it here. And if not, I'm just going to be standing like a dope. And I'll probably cut all this, but whatever. But come on, ladies. Do you think we're stupid? I mean, some guys are stupid, but this one's not stupid. This one's not. St you're not stupid. I'm not stupid. They're not stupid. Speaking of not stupid, I'm about to in invest on you guys how some of the best, the best, best hookers are also not the best looking hookers or whatever you want to call them escorts sugared whatever's whatever i'm extremely confused you're confused i'm fucking confused bro when everybody on tiktok says you're a soft six but you keep getting flown out staying at the ritz eating 700 dollars dinners and going shopping Everybody's so confused. I don't get it. I thought it was the halo effect. I thought hot chicks don't have to do anything. And I thought ugly girls have to work for it. And blah, 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 blah. Dudes. The industrial revolution has made it so we don't have to work anymore. Because we have machines that do it. You can send emails now for a living. Imagine 100 years ago. What do you do for a living? I push buttons like George Jetson. They're like, what the heck is a George Jetson? And even in the 50s, they're like, George Jetson? That job would be sweet. Too bad. They never mentioned that George Jetson was on SSRIs all day. His wife didn't sleep with him, and he's got type 2 diabetes from his button-pushing job. The reason girls looking like that, soft sixes, fives, fours, I'm not going to quibble about what specific number he is. Don't be autistic, guys, or soft are artistic. <laughs> That's the one. The reason girls like this, homely, handsome, normal, average girls, get so far in their sugar baby in career is because they're attainable. It's just like the chick that barks like a dog or the other one that's like chubby and dances and does the Star Wars theme stuff and bought a house on OnlyFans. The reason any of these girls work is because guys need the kayfabe. Kayfabe is theater presented as if it was real. It's the girlfriend experience. It is the, you know what, I am paying her, but I wouldn't have to. I just know it. We need to believe in our heart of hearts that this girl is somebody we could get. You put a thirsty dude with a tech account working at Apple or Meta or 
one of those stupid places where they make a ton of money and get just suckered. And they're like, I could get this girl. So I would fly her to the Bahamas. You get a supermodel there. You're like, I know she's only with me for my money. And there's no illusion there. You can't pretend that this supermodel's with a schlubby four. No, but this one's like, yeah, oh, we could totally get along. I bet you anything. This chick is savage as F. But hey, you know what? She, for the, uh, for the cash to cash to HM, uh, hot babe scale, she has moved that ratio to the opposite side of what you would completely expect. So yeah, don't be mad at her. She decided to turn that four or turn that, yeah, turn that four into two eights or so. I don't know what I got. Give me a, give me a, uh, reference or like a, like a quippy thing in the chat here. Cause I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, earn your money, lady. Earn your money. Oh, but at least she's happy. Check out this one. If your suicide attempt would have worked, how long has it been since he would have lost you? Bipolar type one. It's weird. Bipolar disorder is the new diabetes for chicks. Five years. And you know what she thought? Let's get this back on me because this is depressing. <laughs> I always got to sneak. You notice this? I always got to sneak one that's like dark, dark, dark humor into there. Because <laughs> I'm like, eh, highs and lows, boys. Highs and lows. Let's do it. I almost ended myself five years ago. Is it a real attempt or is it a cry for help? Well... Let's say this, if after five years you're still milking it for clout, I'm going to say it was a cry for help. Now it's tragic, and if you guys ever have that need to possibly end it all, I want you to do and talk, call the suicide hotline. They are there to help. Please do not make... Uh, anyways, I got that out of the way. Last thing you're going to do is listen to me about how to handle your life, but do that the safety stuff. Bipolar type 1. How many types are there, by the way? I just thought, you know... Clinically bitchy only came in one type, bitchy. But what do I know? Having said that, can't let a good uh, a good crisis go to waste. Bomb the Twin Towers. You know what we need? Iraq. Oh, almost ended it all with a bottle of pills. You know what I need? I don't know, 50 TikTok followers. <laughs> Keep this one in the back pocket. Bring it up on a first date. Oh, do not let them bring it up on a first date. If she brings it up on a first date, get out of there. She's clinging to it like it's an identity, and she knows if she says, I was bipolar type 1 and I did the unthinkable, that you, Captain save -a himself, are going to try to save her from herself. And she's going to get a purse and a trip to the Bahamas and all this stuff, and all you're going to get is a lot of grief. And then when you try to leave, she's going to threaten you. If you leave, I'm going to try another attempt. And you're like, I don't want to be stuck with this. Why would you put that on me? And I'll tell you right now, guys. It's not your responsibility. Get the hell out of there. Oh, uh, don't let her do a girl's night out either. Can't play this music, but when your girlfriend's on vacation with the girls, but is really fucking the locals. I think that's literally a Cancun foam party, by the way. And, and the, the thing is blurry because you're in the bar and the lights are bad, but you wouldn't believe how many times... Like, my brother loves Cancun. My girl is originally from the southern Baja, so I travel down there way too much for a guy who doesn't even like Mexico, <laughs> but whatever. And how many times you'll go to, like, a club there or a bar or whatever, and you see, like, four white chicks, four Canadian girls, four American girls. They're always there by themselves, and they all have, like, I've been married for three, four year haircuts. It's kind of like the transition from, like, I'm uh, a strong and independent single woman to I just got married to we're about to have a kid to uh, I don't think this is working out between us levels of hair. And yeah, it's always got to be some Guido looking dude, some Guido looking local doesn't even speak the language, barely can stand on his own two legs. He can't walk without tripping on his jawline and they're like all over it. And I'm just thinking that poor bastard at home probably helped pay for this vacation. Here, honey, why don't you why don't you teach me what it's gonna cost me to lose my kid in a divorce? And you're like, all right, well, I wish you learned. And I always I, I hate putting those what's up on here because when I do those, a lot of guys are like, oh, this is why this is why I've decided to date my hand instead. And I'm like, you're kind of missing the point, dudes. Just keep your head on a swivel. These things don't fall out of the sky. And if you think this is hard and all these girls are Machiavellian overlords, and let me 
one of them actually ratted out the 30 year olds. So here, take this, learn from it, sirs. The average night of a 30 year old girl. Scroll in TikTok. Boy messages me. Good chats. Takes ages to reply. Puts phone down because I'm sleepy. Checks the phone again. No notifications. Looks at new hinge likes. No. Rolls over to try and sleep. Cat cuddles. Starts to violently claw. Pushes the cat off the bed. No messages. Goes on TikTok. Watches tarot cards reading saying boys ain't shit. Gets upset because the tarot card lady is right. Didn't even say good night. Did he message? No. Imagining fake scenarios. Rolo cuddles. She has a dog named Rolo? Fair enough. Rolo leaves. That's it, man. Look. Look. I, oh, I can't believe she did that. I can't believe she did that. Dudes, you do not... You do not have to put up with nothing. You don't. And it's not because women ain't shit. And it's not because you're a special little man and your mom thinks you're great. So these girls think you're great too. It's because we are in the land of abundance. This is what most girls are like if they're single in their late 20s to late 30s. I'm telling you this. My girl has a bunch of them as friends. She tells me all the stuff they're into and it's sad and it's boring. And the best part is that's like boredom waiting to be entertained, just waiting to be entertained. So yeah, as long as you're not boring and you're somewhat fun, it could be damned amazing work for you. Now, granted, you got to be attractive first, because if you're not, you're going to be the guy that's having the great conversation. But yeah, do the guy who doesn't answer because you got something better to do. Yeah, I could go into it more, but I don't want to shit on her. Sounds like she's got it bad enough anyways. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, I remember. Oh, I feel bad. She's 30 and nobody loves her and the cat won't love her and the dog leaves her. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. This is why you don't feel bad. Look at that. Women, once they get past the wall, become virtuous. Wisdom. Now it is too late. The gig is up. Might as well I can rat them out. Yeah, it's um, the heart wants what it wants. And there's actually somebody had a great take on here, which is weird because it's TikTok. Everybody's talking shit, right? But uh, she said it's because girls have this need to be liked and validated. Those types of girls need it. And so those guys that don't give their love very willingly because they just don't care. And they're like, either they got better options or you're not that good or whatever. And then when you finally do give a little bit of affection, they get that dopamine rush. Like, oh, yes, I did it. I won the I won the wanted validation, got validation because I pulled myself up by my by my boob straps and did it. And then it's basically like a drug addiction. And then they wonder they break up and they feel bad. It's like a withdrawal. And then they want another one. And it sucks because like telling a girl to pick better men is like telling a heroin addict, hey, dude, just go get some methadone. They're not going to get methadone. They're going to steal mom's VCR and sell it for more heroin. They're going to suck dick against the dude at the Cancun farm party to get more uh, more heroin. So just accept that's the way it is and just realize you're talking to a bunch of like four-year-old uh, heroin addicts. And then everything becomes so much clearer and makes so much more sense. Oh, speaking of which, speaking of which, look at this with the uh, hello fellow children toque. Part of me wants to laugh at this and part of me wants to sympathize because like she's not wrong. Here's the thing. If a guy is good at relationships and he wants to be in a relationship, he'll get in a relationship. Same as girls, the ones and they all are the ones that get into relationships in like their 20s and their late early 30s and stuff like that. Once you get to about 40, you have two types of guys. They have the leftovers, the ones who are missing the skills or talents required to be in a relationship or... You got the guys that have been in a relationship, are good at it, maybe bad at it, and then they get out of the relationship, usually because the girl pulls some thoughtery. But sometimes maybe it's just him's like, I'm tired of your shit, I gotta go. Doesn't matter. So when she's talking about like, this is probably like date two, 
date three, she's 30, never dated before, or she's a single mom. She's like, what's your problem? And then the guy realizes like, dude, I just got back from Vietnam and you want me to go on a safari in the jungle? Like, no, no, that's what's wrong with me. Of course, the other guys are like absolute trash and yelling up on that love is blind show, but whatever. Oh, oh, did I have that? I did. I did. I did. All right, guys, who's ready for some like cultural appropriation shit here? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Men will still pick a blonde over you any day. Um, guys, I think I just found shade from Love is Blind's burner account. <laughs> <laughs> there, this is, it's a, if you guys don't know who Shake is and what the Love is Blind thing is, it's, go watch Don. He's the one who's like, I love breaking down Netflix shows to show male and female dynamics. It's just a bunch of like stunted adults acting like children have to get married before they meet each other. And then you find out why they're single in like their mid thirties. It's like anybody who's in a good relationship loves this show. Cause it's like watching Jerry Springer with better incomes, <laughs> better incomes, less shaved heads. It's all I'm going to say. But the reason that stuff kind of resonates is because there is a, there's a real, concern amongst the southeast asian community for guys it's that the girls only date white guys all of our good indian women only date white men and then when they want to settle down and impress their parents they meet a good indian boy and the guy's like i don't want to be the sloppy you know 407th for these guys why didn't you like me before when i was in my 20s and you were in your teens or 20s or whatever age it was but a lot of the guys who are kind of, you know, swinging dicks, the chads, the chads, the Sikhs that I used to grow up with back in the day, they were the same way. Any blonde, it was all about the blondes, the hot blondes. And then the unattractive Southeast Asian dudes were always about the hot blondes, but they would get, they weren't hot blondes, but they were blonde. It's almost like this weird fetish thing where, yeah, you know, she's ugly and pasty and whatever, but is blonde, she checks the box. And then a lot of those women get mad because those guys, you know, eventually they're starting to have moms who are a little bit more lenient. It's like, whatever, I just want them to get married at this point. I don't care to what. And so now all these people are mad that they're not, you know, marrying good Indian boys and good Indian women. And everybody's sad and everybody's alone. And case in point, this chick here is like 27, 28, hasn't settled down and she's watching Love is Blind. So she knows, like, she's smiling, but on the inside, you can feel that. That's like, my parents didn't immigrate and work themselves to the bone for this, did they? I'm sorry to say they did. But that's okay, because girls bitching about dating is a universal quality. Um, so that'd be real with you guys. You look like f***ing clowns. When guys in their late 20s spends weekends going to the nightclubs and hooking up with 18-year-olds. You notice that? It was never trying to hook up with 18-year-olds. It was that they were. First off... I don't know where she is, because I think the drinking age in, like, Alberta is 18 and Quebec. And the States is, like, 21. So why are they at nightclubs with 18-year-olds? Maybe this maybe this is just, like, a big Alberta-specific one. I don't know. Maybe let me know in the chat, but yeah. Girls are mad when other girls infringe on their territory. What you're watching is Pepsi have an aggressive anti-Coke campaign there, because Coke tastes... Because Coke is younger and tighter and more pleasant and doesn't have single kids in the thing and no divorces under its belt i just wanted a pepsi just a fun pepsi it's like no you're a misogynist you need to go after this you need to go after this old wrinkly coke with its uh tiktok filters and can we take a minute by the way to bitch about that on tiktok did you know did you guys know that tiktok does a filter doesn't even matter if you turn one on or not to fix your face so like every girl you see on tiktok is immediately got like the 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 blurred out vaseline face and you don't know what's underneath there. So it's like you're not even talking to people. This is literally the the girl's version of, uh, what's that? Uh, oh, there's this gamer streaming thing where you stream a game, and then but you make yourself into an anime chick, and then you do it on there. Somebody help me out here. I don't know the name of these things. It's what the Zoomers are doing now. So you're looking at some like big boba anime waifu. In reality, it's like Stanley, the 27-year-old IT developer. <laughs> It's like the same thing like that, but for like chicks in their 30s. But I don't know what to tell you. But there's some hope at the end of the tunnel. A lot of depressing chicks bitching about their love life, ch bitching about their husband, bitching about everything, except for having to go to the Mexican Cancun foam party with their friends. They seem to like not bitching about that. Here, here's the way out for you guys. Here's what you need to take from this. 
It's when male feminists without girlfriends post about how to treat a woman. Why would I listen to you? Look at that. Nice looking girl. She's not a supermodel, but she's nice. She's sweet. She looks up to her man. And according to the greatest pickup artist on Twitter, uh, Rivolino, he didn't lean in. Therefore, the love is forever. Draw, somebody draw green lines on this one. But yeah, look at the guy. He's kind of nerdy. Dressed like, you know, whatever. Just a little t-shirt. Scruffy hair. Normal house. The girl absolutely adores him. It turns out there's more that you bring to the table under than that shit that they tell you on uh, Twitter. Sign up for my Gumroad course. If you don't have a six-pack and a Lamborghini, you might as well just kill yourself. And you're like, well, I think you'll do just fine. Again, game is the great equalizer. Just learn how to string a sentence together. Get a little bit of that silver tongue. That's a speaking thing, not a sexual innuendo, by the way. Get that all together. You'll be happy. Get a younger girl. She's pleasant. She'll be pleasant to you. Then you guys can sit there and grow old together and then laugh at uh, Shake from Love is Blind wanting the hot blondes. <laughs> Or, here's the alternative, you date, you date, as the girls call it, age appropriately. And this is, this is what's, this is what's waiting for you. <laughs> Since I've already pissed off all the men on TikTok, I'm just going to keep going with it. So you're not embarrassed to be sitting on public transit when there's a woman standing in front of you? Because if I was a man, I would get up and be like, here, please have my seat. Because I would literally feel emasculated to watch a woman stand while I sit. 1998 called they wanted their men's rights advocacy back holy jeez you're on public transit you're not entitled to nothing look man you're in that office right now because you wanted things to be equal and then what's your biggest gripe right now well first off you're grazing at work chow down on cookies and sending tiktoks those emails aren't going to send itself susan <laughs> secondly it's public transit i'll tell you right now any guy like normal guys if it's an old lady if it's a dude with crutches, girl in a wheelchair, they'll absolutely get up. No, no guy is a monster. I mean, some guys, okay, some guys are monsters, granted. But if you're riding the bus every day, you're probably not meeting many of them. Mostly, the worst you're going to find is like a drunk homeless guy. And even then, they tend to be kind of sweet. But uh, I, I don't think her legs are broken. I know her attitude is broken. I know her heart is broken. And I know that cookie's calories are probably going to break down that liver too. But whatever. It's like, relax. Relax, man. You'll be fine. If this is the worst thing that happens to you, I mean, it could be worse. Huck trunkers could be honking their horn outside of you, outside of your apartment like terrorists, or the Ukraine might be making you make Molotov cocktails. But no, you got to pull your MRA MGTOW talking points bitching about having to stand up in the bus. Like not since Lenny Kravitz made a whole song bitching about not being able to catch a cab. Have we seen this kind of like entitled whiny nonsense just ridiculous. And to be fair, Lenny can Lenny can sling. He get, puts out some banger tunes. I haven't heard one of her songs yet, and I'm pretty sure if she did sing, it probably sucked. Because I've you've seen the creativity of some of these chicks on here. It's just brutal. Just brutal. Uh, uh This one? Okay. Bottom of the barrel in TikTok quality. Like, what's he talking about? Yeah, it turns out there's like a bottom of the barrel in TikTok quality. It's not even worth playing. It's just like a static Black Rifle coffee company cup and a tweet. Like, what the hell? Isn't Black Rifle the one that was like, everybody got choked at before because they were like, yeah, free speech and guns. And then they started doing some woke stuff. And everybody's like, I hate Black Rifle. They're a bunch of cucks. And so I'm not sure why it's in the shot. Maybe it's like a, one of those guerrilla marketing ads. But the chicks here is like, I knew a single guy in college who wore a fake wedding ring because it helped him get attention from women. He slept with dozens of them when they thought that he was cheating on his wife. But when he told them he was single afterwards, they were all outraged. Um, so, like, you know how we're like, don't ever trust anything you read on social media. Don't All TikToks are staged, which is true. But then Twitter is also staged. So you got like an inception level. Is the, is, the, is the TikTok just here to sell you Black Rifle coffee? Or is it here to, like, inform you on stuff? Or does the guy just want clout or the girl or whatever? And then the same thing with the tweet. Is that just a clout tweet? what but yeah um pre-selection this is basic pre-selection if other girls like you the odds that other girls will also like you is increased so the best thing you can do if nobody likes you right now and i don't know why anybody watching this video wouldn't be liked i like you you seem rather nice and pleasant you shower every day you got a wicked smile you brush your teeth you comb your hair you like dogs you like dogs don't you you like digs 
But if no girl's giving you the time of day, go make a bunch, go get orbited by like seven or eight girls and go out with them. Yeah, it's a shopping day and guys are like, what are you? One of those limp wristed blah, blah, blahs. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then go hit on girls and they'll see you with these girls. And they'll be like, oh, those girls like them. Maybe I'll like them. It'll increase your chances. Or get some Black Rifle coffee and bitch about it on TikTok. And, you know, we'll see which one of you ends up uh, happy first. Stop oppressing us with your teeth. <laughs> All right. Uh, here's another dark one. We've got highs and lows, fellas, to highs and lows. Me looking forward to the gift I'd get after my ex would physically abuse me. And what else but TikTok dancing? I'm going to lump this in with the chick talking about, when was your last suicide attempt? But she's doing like the Macarena talking about her five year ago suicide attempt. She's talking about the, uh, the, the, he hits me, then buys me flowers cycle. I know there's like a psychological thing to it, but I'm not about to go talking all smart talk. We're just sitting here on TikTok laughing at chicks, chicks and MGTOWs, the two most laughable people without talent on the internet. <laughs> but, um, it's like the idea that somebody can't control their emotions and their temper and they get violent and they get abusive, but then afterwards they feel really bad about it. And so they buy a gift hoping to get the other person to forgive them and then they forgive them, but they don't change the behavior. And it just continues on like this. I believe what they call in, uh, in, uh, in medical parlance is a abusive relationship. Now I know I would never be in one of those and you would never be in one of those. And you're not that kind of guy. And I'm not that kind of guy, but neither one of us are in this like, home in the alps with a stay-at-home wife dancing over getting a new louis vuitton purse and a couple uh, a couple pairs of irish sunglasses but you know what it's like you gotta watch i had this episode of this thing it was called uh i'm not an abuser but i play one on tv and i know it's like a weird way to put it but for a lot of these things you just kind of have to realize that uh it's all about boredom like a lot of these girls are really, really, really bored. And I know it sounds horrible and tragic, but in the same way, if you're bored, you want to watch a serial killer documentary. Some of these girls take that to like 12. I'm going to watch a homemade serial killer documentary as the main actress in it. And they're like, wow, that really sucked. But I've never felt so alive. I mean, I almost didn't, but that's the alive part. It's like those guys that do extreme sports. They jump off cliffs, like base diving and base jumping and stuff or ride a skateboard into the ocean over top of a shark and then surf into a, a whale. I don't know, whatever the hell they do. But that's the point, right? It's like, because I've never felt more alive than when I was on the cusp of death. But girls don't want to wear parachutes and they don't want to jump off a cliff. So instead they just date, they just date the dude. Hey, look at that dude with no impulse control and lunchbox hands. I'm going to date him. He seems like he's nice. Uh Oh, last one. Last one. I don't know what to make of this one. I might joke around and laugh at it, but it's just so absurd. I had to put it in here. It's, I don't get it. Uh, it's like, to be are just listening to this and not watching, it's when you're 32, divorced, no kids, then you realize it's just societal pressure and that happiness is an inside job. The girl went from what I can only describe as an orangutan having a seizure into what I can only describe as a white girl trying to twerk. And I don't know what to make of it. Uh, is that a good thing? Was she bitching? Was she happy? Is this a cry for help? Is her next TikTok going to be about her suicide attempt? I don't know. All I know is I'm pretty sure with the low cut top, she's trying to get people to look at her. Um, I mean, I, I liked, I liked watching adult swim cartoons in my 20s there the ones that were just so nonsensical that like it kept you interested like that show too many cooks or whatever i think this is one of those where if i just make it obscure and random enough then the boys will like me having said that at 32 if you haven't learned to twerk and you don't have a family like you got to pick a road twerking family i don't know which way you want to go probably not this one anyways uh i hope you guys enjoyed yourselves those are some tiktoks i'm and if you're watching this as a clip I actually do these. I do the raw recordings live with a bunch of people in the chat. I thought it'd be kind of fun. And we're going to go banter afterwards. So feel free. Catch one of these things live. I put them out randomly. And uh, you can join us on it. So I'll catch you guys later. And remember, don't eat paint. All right. Dude, you guys are lit in the chat, man. 
Uh, no, I did not get my teeth whitened. I just brushed them every day. I did have braces as a kid. So we're going to go through the chats right now. We got Competent Man with the $5 Super Chat. Hitting dogs on social media as a career ender? What about Cappy? Of course he reformed and made some positive inroads with the, the puppy lovers. Yeah, dude, the fact... It's only because nobody cares about Aaron that he's actually able to get away with this stuff. Unfortunately, I'm not the gray man like the gray man, so... Can't quite get away with it. And where was the next one here? Oh, do I have to go through the thing? Damn it! Oh, there we go. Wet Beaver looking for wood. Two pounds super chat. Talk, or super chat. Well, off topic, what is AstroTurf? What does it mean? Oh, so if you don't mean, here's like a here's like your media manipulation lesson for the day. Um, in stadiums, football, baseball stadiums, they usually have grass. Grass is everywhere. You run on the grass. The problem is grass takes time to 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 grow. It changes. It can be slippery. You got to deal with water and drainage and that kind of stuff. And then some places like Madison Square Garden, they also have the same stadium for like basketball games and hockey games and symphonies. So you can't really take the grass out. And if you just start covering it with tarps and stuff, you'll kill the grass. So what they've done is they make a plastic replacement for grass called AstroTurf. And they place that on there anyways, and which is weird. It's, it gives guys like black toe and shit like that. Where it's, uh, cause it's like, it's like basically running on a plastic carpet, but you're pretending it's grass. So when they use it in like a media sense, it's that somebody is basically faking grass. You're both, you're supposed to think it's real grass, but it's not. So it's somebody who creates a fake media narrative that doesn't actually exist. Like case in point that, uh, the trucker convoy, the one guy had like a, a swastika on a Canadian flag and he's right. Trudeau is bringing this to our short, basically calling Trudeau a Nazi, right? And then the media took it and started saying, look at this in the crowd. There's a bunch of neo-Nazis in the crowd. And oh my God, they bring in the hate in here. That's like an AstroTurf for a very simple example. Uh, winter skateboarding, $5 super chat. Keep it up. I will absolutely keep it up, sir. You can't stop me even if you wanted to. Even if you wanted to. Uh, let me see. What else do we got here? Did I catch them all? Hopefully I didn't miss one. Actually, you know what? Somebody taught me. There's this thing you can do. You go to the uh, YouTube studio and it'll tell you. Oh, it did. Okay, good. That's all of them. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed yourselves in these ones. We're doing some laughs. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I had like 50 of them. And it's like the quality of shitty TikToks has really gone down. Like everybody who had any talent right now is bitching about the Ukraine and World War Three, And I can't be bothered to give a shit about it. Like you've got... Every woman going to war wearing full mascara foundation and airsoft rifle, making Molotov cocktails with styrofoam, tank footage from 2014, and then making up a, a red baron in the skies. And I'm just like, if you guys want me to give a shit about this war, you're going to have to come at me with a lot better than like Coney 2012 fucking memes, you know? Oh, and listen to Marty, help a poor Canadian, subscribe to the second channel. Absolutely. By the way, guys. So after this, I'm going to go have some lunch. And then once we're done, we are going to be streaming on the second channel. See, Marty's here. I want to put a pin to it, too, because he deserves it. Go check it out. That's going to be a fun one. I'm going to run me up the flagpole on that one. Anyways, as always, I guess I'm going to catch you guys later. My my doggo is back from the uh, from the vet. And I want to see how he's doing. So for the rest of you guys, I saw a lot of chats. I know I should have been more engaged with it, but we got work to do. So I just hope you enjoyed yourselves. And yes, green light, absolutely. We're doing the craft. Going to run ourselves up the flagpole. But thank you for the likes. Thank you for the views. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for your attention. And I hope I made your day a little bit brighter. So I will catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.